Hello and welcome to the Mechatronic Showcase Online, where I'm here with Alec Dick from Hepco Motion, and we're going to be giving you the latest and greatest developments and innovation of both our companies. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Really excited to be presenting from the MK7 facility, surrounded by these magnificent Formula One cars. And we've got a really exciting series of presentations to, to show you and a super exciting reveal at the end of it. So please do stick around. As always, this is gonna be a fully interactive event. So we encourage your participation, either at the bottom or the top of your screen, you'll see a little Q&A module. You can click on that, type in your question at any time, and we have a bunch of experts on hand who will do their very best at the end of presentation to answer your questions. Absolutely. We really value your feedback. In fact, almost every product we develop is based on your feedback, your ideas, and we go away and give you the best innovation we possibly can. So, at full speed, let's go to our presentations. Hello again and welcome. We're here with Bradley McEwen from Beckhoff Automation UK, and we're here to talk about the new developments with Beckhoff moving closer and closer to a cabinetless machine. Now, basically, this has been a slow development over the last four or five years, and Bradley's been involved quite a lot in this process. So, Bradley, tell us a little bit about the journey that Beckhoff's taken moving away from the cabinet to the machine. Of course, thanks, Dan. So, we've been involved with on-machine uh, components for 15 to 20 years. We started with our um, panel PCs, where we built our controllers into a touchscreen um, PC. Uh, we moved into um, on-machine IOs and cabling systems, as you can see here. Uh, these have been around for quite a while now. Um, and we progressed into uh, motion control. So we have our AMP system, which is um, our drive and motor combination um, that's designed to be directly mounted onto the machine with a power supply all EtherCAT based, um, all PC based. Absolutely. So I think what you're saying there as well, I think as an example, is EtherCAT and power over one cable. So that's really our sort of one cable technology. Absolutely. Cable so, so part of our on-machine solution is a single cable cabling systems because we're trying to reduce mm. cabinet yeah, space absolutely. and yeah. reduce manufacturing time. Absolutely. So we have our on-machine components and we have our on-machine cabling systems. This essentially mm. As, Dan, as you quite rightly mentioned, Dan, mm -hmm. in here we have EtherCAT and power. So we can distribute EtherCAT and power across the machine. Absolutely. So I think after that, shortly after that anyway, we developed the on-machine IPC basically, which is a higher IP rating and all the connectors yeah. uh, are set up for on-machine mounting basically. Yeah. So but what I'm trying to get to as well is the, the reasons for doing it. Because sure. obviously our customers will be talking about this or requesting this for quite a few years. Yeah, absolutely. So there are many reasons and there's many benefits for both the OEM and the end user. So if we start at the OEM, the design. Yeah, sure. So from machine uh, design, there's less to design because there's uh, less need to design for the more less connectors, important. I guess. Yeah, less connectors, yeah, yeah. but it eliminates the design need for cabinets and where to put mm -hmm. cabinets. Mm -hmm. This shrinks the machine size down Absolutely. makes it a lot more compact. Sure, sure. Um, with our cabling systems and our on-machine systems, it makes modularity far easier. Um, there's savings in procurement, component reduction, yeah, yeah. Uh, savings in, commission, in build time. Uh, mm -hmm. We're just plugging and play, plugging cables and mm -hmm. components in as opposed to wiring to them. So yeah. I, I guess there's less room for error, right? Look, so I think what, what you're sort of saying is yeah. commissioning's easier, commissioning is less easier. error, electrical design's easier. Le yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, commission is a really good point. You know, yeah, each yeah. cabling point is a point of failure. We eliminate that with, with a plug and play system. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's also um, some hidden benefits that you might not think of is mm. because the machines are smaller, that means our tra the transport cost for the OEM is a lot less. Yeah, yeah which is uh, an environmental consideration. Sure. Also, when, we, when, the, when the machines are on site, uh, the commissioning time is drastically reduced because traditionally you're not pulling cables through. Yeah, on-site through. testing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. on-site testing, again, is, is, is drastically reduced. Mm -hmm. So that's from the OEM machine builder sure, point sure. of view. Which benefits the machine 
or the manufacturer, should I say, end user. Absolutely. But then I guess there's benefits for the manufacturer as well. Absolutely. So for the end user, uh, a more compact machine means that they can get more machines mm. into a manufacturing area. Um, the days of building new factories or factory extensions True, are yeah. um, economically and Energy's more and energy, yeah, yeah, and environmentally, environmental yeah. impact. Sure, sure. Um, the other nice thing about uh, a non-machine type solution is modularity mm. is easier yeah. to realize. So machine configurations can be moved around. True, I guess normally that would mean a lot of connections to sort Absolutely. of add a Absolutely, you'd have to move the cabinets. Sure. And, and, everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and recycling, I mean, um, when a machine is um, comes to its end of its life, mm. if you think of all the components in a, in a control cabinet, to recycle that is mm. quite, it's by no means impossible, but it's very intensive. Mm. With our new MX plug and play automation solution, mm. the recycling and the reusability of this is far easier. Absolutely. So that's the full life cycle then really we're talking about. Absolutely. So we're talking about the beginning all the way through to the, to, to the end. To the end, absolutely right, yeah. So tell me, is there any new technology as such then in the MX? So no, no t new technology, but no. um, certainly some enhancements. So the MX is a combination of, of all of Beckhoff technologies repackaged and repurposed mm. into an on-machine solution. Uh, so yeah. that includes things like EtherCAT. Mm -hmm. So we run EtherCAT yeah, down the back plane here. Our single cable technology, mm -hmm. our IPC uh, technology, our motion yep. control technology, mm -hmm. all combined into a machine um, on machine solution. Absolutely. So more physical protection basically. Absolutely, yeah. But also I guess it means standardization in the interfaces for each of these types of connections. That's, I guess. that's a good point. Yeah. Um, the, the way to realize this, if you think about a traditional um, control cabinet, you have various components that you have to wire to. Um, what we've designed is we've designed automation components but with a common interface. So things like a servo drive, an IPC, an IO system, Yep. has a common interface to make that on machine um, flexibility and or integration integration easier. that's easier. a better word absolutely. absolutely yeah well that's fascinating so thank you very much Bradley for that so I'm sure we'll be hearing more about that later but for now let's go over to Dave and Alec for more information on productivity gains with B guide solutions okay thanks Dan thanks Brad and now we're over to uh, David. Hello, my name is David Weston. I'm the International Sales Manager uh, for Hepco Motion, um, operational in Asia. Alec, we've met before. Indeed we have. And today we're talking about increased productivity. And, you know, when I think of the um, Red Bull MK7 facility that we're in today, and, you know, Formula One teams, you know, productivity is going to be right at the forefront of their you know, design ethos, you know, they've got to get to a race every one or two weeks. And, you know, when I look at HEPCO and, and what we do, how do we support our customers increasing their productivity? It's a good question. How long have you got? Let's start with the facts. 2023 productivity is everything. Output is everything. And the HEPCO V system, quite frankly, can facilitate that and does facilitate that across a broad range of industries and, and application types. In terms of 24-7 uh, operation, low maintenance, um, no catastrophic failure, precision, there's obviously precision and repeatable accuracy is important as ever, and the HEPCO V system continues to give the customer what they need. Yeah, that's a very good point. And uh, you, know, you mentioned the fact that the V system has been around for a, a very long time. Um, you know, what makes it particularly relevant in today's environment, high demand environment, high performance um, requirements? Absolutely right. So a long time, we've been perfecting the V system for 50 years now. And we've not just been perfecting the V system, but we've been opening our, opening our range of choices. And so what we do when we have a look at an application, we hold the customer's hand from day one and help them with the selection, help them with the bespoke product to absolutely suit their requirement um, most particularly uh, and obviously the, the range allows us to do that. And you know specifically looking at some of the features of the V-Guide, yes. you know where does that really allow us to excel in certain you know applications or fields, environments etc? 
We've talked about V systems before and the inherent benefits of it, but I, for me, um, it, the, compliance uh, for me is the key. And I look at 2023, I look at automation systems around the world, I look at track management being the, the key way forward at the moment, because what it gives you in terms of uh, buffering, uh, lane adjustment, um, and essentially, if there's a problem on the machine or anything like that, the machine keeps going. If you've got a buffer and you've got lane changeability, and going back to the compliance of the HEPCO V system, the ability to jump gaps, the ability to jump joints, in a precise and effective and quiet manner is key. Uh, and we're seeing more and more that, you know, where systems where they're building up instead of sideways because mm -hmm. they save space, we're seeing more and more um, in those larger configurations, the complete absolute effective solution of HEPCO-V systems. Yeah, and of course, we're talking about footprint and, and benefits that that can bring right. um, to designers. But, uh, you know, when I took, when we look at about V systems in general, I mean, performance wise, um, you know, weight, speeds, what sort of thing are we talking about? We essentially cater for anything from grams to, to multiple tons and it somewhat depends on the size of the system as to what you require for any specific requirement. And again, because we have those, those variable options, it allows us to choose quite bespokely and quite accurately for each, each application. In terms of speed, we talked about speed being important for productivity, four meters per second, is I would say nominally easy. And it's not just about speed, of course, it's about acceleration, how fast you can reach that speed. And the science between, be, um, behind the HEPCO bearing facilitates that acceleration. And, and I, I could talk all night about this, you know that, Eric, or even all yeah. day. Indeed. And, you know, our viewers who are joining us today, they must be, you know, they, they've probably got all sorts of different types of applications, industries, environments, uh, that they may consider, where does where where could you use a, a V guide in these types of solutions? I've been at Habco for 25 years now, and no two days have been the same. We've looked at, it's from my perspective, every industry known to man, every industry sector known to man, and every type of application out there. It's one of the benefits of the Hepco V system. It's such a perfect all rounder. That's what it is. And um, so there are no limitations. And like we said before, uh, part of our strength is our experience and our ability to walk with a customer from day one and help them with that selection. Because it's a big range and it needs to be big to suit the, the very, very variable co and contrasting requirements of modern day industry applications. David, thank you. Thank you. Um, we're now gonna go over to Dan and Adam. Okay, thank you, Alec. Thank you, David. So I'm here with Adam, and we're going to be talking about machine vision. Now, of course, we've been talking a lot about motion systems, motion control, all those detailed things. But we wanted to include some new tools and functionality from back off with the machine vision. We think it's incredibly important in this day and age to not only develop our own vision system, but what we're going to be talking about is how we integrate that into the standard control system. So traditionally, many controls or vision systems in the past have been a separate item which we've had to have a communication with, either by old traditional digital methods or with a field bus or even not even a synchronized field bus. So here with Adam, who's also been involved in our new motion control technology, which is Explainer, we're going to be talking about that as well. So Adam, tell us a little bit about how the integrated approach can really help the machine builder and ultimately the manufacturer. Well, um, Beckhoff have essentially um, developed PC-based control way back in 1986. And um, where we are today is that because of that PC-based control system, along with Twincat 3, we have a real-time controller that makes it really easy for us to adapt and add modularity to that system on a software and a hardware level. Okay. Twincat Vision is one of those modules. So we developed a, a GigiVision driver. Yep. It's a standard in the, in, in the vision industry mm -hmm. that we can now connect directly to cameras from our real-time system. Okay. That gets images into the land of PLC. So the programmer who's programming the motion system can also work on the vision system in the same code 
on the same PC based yep. controller. So this yep, removes yep. the need for additional hardware. Sure. And things like or that. even additional really engineer, I guess. Oh, 100%, yeah. Mm. You still need the, the guy that knows how the vision algorithms yep. work and how the lighting works. Sure. So there's there's always space for that for, yep. that, for that guy um, or girl. But it's just having all that in one system is um, is really the advantage that we've added now. So, um, so yeah. So, I mean, really, we're talking about speed here, right? So we don't want a system where we have a PLC and an engineer writing a program and then somebody else writing a piece of software over here. And then those two have got to talk and we lose time. Exactly. Okay? So what we're really talking about here in high dynamic motion situations, we can have a real time vision system right there on the machine without any other peripherals or more importantly, delays, I guess. Exactly that, yeah. You have the two systems working high end, high speed motion, yep. vision system collecting images to the same device, yep. processing those on the same platform okay. with a single piece of software. So you mentioned GIGI. So talk me through a little bit about the advantages of using an open standard, I guess. The advantage is because we're a PC-based manufacturer. So we make mm -hmm. PCs. We have a platform of PCs that has been in the market for a while. Mm -hmm. The idea is that these are all Ethernet ports. So being able to connect on GigiVision is a, is a standard. Mm -hmm. It's an Ethernet protocol. Yep. So it, it makes sense for us to use that. Also, it helps with the real-time side. USB is not a real-time protocol. So we still get that high speed and sure, deterministic right. control mm -hmm. by, bandwidth, by using basically. that. And bandwidth as well mm -hmm. on GigiVision. It's a well-known standard. It's well used. All manufacturers of cameras use GigiVision. Mm -hmm. So for us, having that driver allows us then to connect to a multitude of devices. Sure, absolutely. And this is what I wanted to say is that it doesn't just have to be 2D vision. We're already talking about uh, line scan cameras. And we've already talked about, or we've worked with customers on laser scanners, 3D vision, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. interesting. So we talked a little bit about the software. Let's talk a little bit about the more hardware developments that Backoff's done recently. So this is this has been a long time coming. You know, a lot of thoughts gone into this hardware. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, like like you say. So we, we started with the software because there is a range of hardware out there that we could yep. use on the Gigi Vision yep. standard. The the logical next step was to introduce our new our, our own hardware. Um, so what we did is we've created a range um, yep. which we're really looking forward to. So we have our own cameras, we have our own lighting systems, yep. and we have our own lenses. So that gives us the full portfolio on the vision front. Mm -hmm. The real game changer for us is that these adapt using EtherCAT P. Yep. So power of EtherCAT allows us to create these really complex topologies of lighting, yep. cameras, daisy chain directly off of your lighting system. Yep. So it really simplifies installation. Sure, absolutely. Our yeah. own lenses, we have hoods mm -hmm. to, um, to turn these devices into a more IP67 rated device. Yep. So again, yep. fit for industry. Um, and EtherCAT P being the EtherCAT field bus, we can connect these daisy chain and then scan back, mm -hmm. scan this back into our into our TwinCAT system. So for Absolutely, the software yeah. guy and for the hardware installation point of view, mm -hmm. everything is simplified. Yep. And then once that's scanned back into the system, you're triggering, you're, you're selecting different um, uh, different types of lighting. So it's your visible spectrums, your infrared. Yep. Um, so it really gives you a, an all-in-one solution, and EtherCAT's the, the powerhouse behind that. Absolutely. So really what we're saying is this hardware, <clears throat> which used to be a separate connection, is now under one roof. So the controls engineer can link this, link his control system to the lighting, which means that even, I guess, with the same product, we could do different lighting configurations to get different measurements. Exactly, exactly that. Uh, and the beauty of the lenses as well on the, on the VOS 3000 range is um, we take care of uh, chromatic aberration. Okay. So I can do visible lighting and infrared lighting from the same light, yep. and I don't have to change my lenses because this will correct the, the chromatic aberration form. Interesting. So, um, Interesting. It's a, we've gone into a lot of thought process behind this to, to make sure that this is a, a really good piece Absolutely. of kit that benefits the industry. Fantastic. So I think to summarize, just on a software note, you know, the new hardware is coming out. Everybody's excited to see that. On the software note, we've talked about integrated into the control system, which the control engineer is normally used to, but also we can cater for the higher level languages and the more professional vision systems as well, or the professional vision engineers, if you like. So we can put all that essentially under one roof. Yeah, exactly that. Not, not all programmers are, are the same. Absolutely. C++, MATLAB, you know, PLC code, your, mm -hmm. your IC standards, things like that. Becker have always been really good at catering towards a, a larger group of developers, and it's really going that way now. So, um, yeah, if you want to program in C++, real-time C++, then you can do that, and the libraries are available there. If you're in MATLAB, Simulink, something like that, you can pass that information absolutely, across. Yeah. ADS is, is your friend in that, in, in that instance. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, yeah, it's uh, really simple to use and still open to, to all engineers. Absolutely. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. No so there we have a quick snapshot into the world of new world of Beckoff 
vision. So we're going to hand over now to Alec and Stuart over on the drive system. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks guys. Uh, so now I'm uh, joined by Stuart. Hi, good afternoon now. Uh, my name is Stuart Hill. I'm the technical sales manager here at Hepco Motion. Thanks Stuart. And uh, today we're looking at DTS, um, DTS technology. And when I think about sort of product handling and moving a product from point A to point B, you know, very much the sort of the, the long-term solution has been a linear motion with a, an actuator or guide, for example. How does this technology differ? Well, essentially, uh, the DTS allows for continual motion. There is no linear transfer. It is a continual ring and track system based upon HEPCO technology. Um, and it is completely bespoke to customers' requirements. You can have the system as a standard oval with 180 degree turns or rectangular systems that will allow you almost infinite widths and lengths. Um, it basically creates the heart of any customer's machine. Yeah, okay, and you mentioned that, and, and you know, the example we're looking at here, we've got a, uh, a industrial robot which is picking and placing. Um, you know, when the designer's sort of thinking about putting this into this, to their machine, you know, what are, what are the considerations? Where, where does it fit? Um, what, are the, what about the ancillary extras such as the robots and pick and place systems? Well, essentially, we have a number of different sizes of DTS that will allow from carrying a few grams all the way up to 100 kilograms. Um, our new DTS Plus 76 allows for these very heavy loads. Um, you can have things like car automotive parts and, and assemblies. Um, from, from our point of view, you can have a wide range of carriage pitches to allow customers' own designs and what suits their needs. No, fantastic. And, and when you talk about those loads and speeds, you know, performance is very much a, a common theme. Um, you know, what, what are we talking about with these types of systems? Um, speeds of up to two meters a second are easily possible. That will allow high throughput of customers' product. Sort of 120 parts per minute is easily achievable. Okay. And, uh, you know, this example is working with an industrial robot and Clearly, you need a degree of accuracy and repeatability for those types of, of applications. What, what can this achieve? Um, the sort of ac accuracy that can be achieved with the DTS, once in combination with our specific carriage locking system, is plus or minus 50 microns. Um, it's helped also by a pneumatic actuator that allows high-speed locking and unlocking of the carriages. Fantastic. And... Uh, Obviously, the, these types of systems are designed for 24-7 operation. Yep. Um, what's the sort of maintenance requirements for a, uh, this type of system? Essentially, the DTS it requires zero maintenance. Um, it has lubricators on the carriages to provide oil into the guidance. And added to that, with our patented bleed lubrication technology, that will allow continual greasing of the slide system and no maintenance for customers in the life of the system. Fantastic. Thanks, Stuart. Shall we go and take a look at the HGS? Let's go. Okay, so Stuart, we're now over with our HGS heavy-duty gantry system. And our viewers may be looking at this technology and wondering, well, why can't I use an overhead crane or maybe a large industrial robot? Okay, yeah, well, that's a good question. Um, essentially, uh, an industrial crane and a robot, they have their place in, in applications. Um, but cranes, inherently, um, even though they'll give you long strokes, they are generally low speed uh, and low accuracy, whereas a HEPCO gantry can offer both high speed, high accuracy, and high payloads. Um, in terms of robots, um, robots can cover high payloads and high accuracy, but their envelope is quite limited. Whereas HEPCO gantry system as, as this, we can offer very long strokes, almost unlimited in terms of the main running axis. Okay, so effectively what we're looking at here is best of both worlds. Yep. Um, what sort of um, performance can we get out of these systems? I mean, what type of payloads, what type of speeds are these systems capable of running at? Well, in, in its configurations, you can have speeds of over two meters a second uh, and payloads of up to 250 kilos are, are easily achievable depending upon the configuration that you choose for our gantries. Now, that's interesting. You mentioned configuration, and I'm looking at this, and, and it's quite a, an advanced piece of engineering. There's all clearly a lot of design work that goes into this. Um, how do our customers go about 
specifying or having one of these systems specified. So HEPCO can provide the support from basically concept of, of the overall design all the way through to supply and installation. Um, we offer a unique service using our own system configurator, which is led by technical engineers from my team and also from the sales side, where we can have an online meeting with the customer and discuss their requirements. And from there, we can configure a system in real time and provide a quote and a CAD file. This cuts down the time in terms of the overall concept of the design from days down to hours. So essentially, we're taking all the difficult, hard legwork out of, of this process for the customers. Um, and, and I'm just looking at this, and you know, you mentioned about the very high payloads that these could potentially deliver. And, you know, of course, there's got to be a safety element with, with that. So what, what have we built into these designs? So in, in terms of the overall design, the, the basis is from the heavy duty slide system that HEPCO have designed and supplied for tens of years. We have essentially turbocharged that and we now have a numerous safety features from a Z-axis brake to catches that will stop the X-axis from falling all the way down to shock absorbers and buffers that will uh, allow end protection of the systems. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Stuart. We're now going to go over and take a look at the XTS and GFX. Okay, thank you very much. I'm here with Bradley once again. We're stood in front of the track management switch, or TMS as it's known. Now it's been with us for a few years, quite a few years actually, so it's not new technology as such, but we wanted to be here with Bradley today and we wanted to talk about some of the applications that have been realized by our customers already. So Brad, give us a bit of an idea of what the customers are using it for. So essentially using them for process flow or, or diverting process flow, mm -hmm. inspection systems and yep. tool changes. So high value products, um, diversion systems and inspection systems, yep. you might want to take it, uh, take it out of the Absolutely, process yeah. flow yep. into a rework station and then bring it back up into the process flow. Yep, sure. um, tool changes when you're doing flexible manufacturing with uh, different product sizes, you might want to bring the tooling out where you manually or a robot changes the tooling, then brings the tooling back up into the process. Time frame. saving basically. Time saving, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, and of course quality is important these days and as Bradley mentioned, high value products, you know, we can't always lose track of them. We need that 100% traceability. So that's, that's very interesting. So, you know, there's lots of options with the mover types and everything else we can do, but we're not gonna talk about that too much today. That's covered elsewhere in this show. Um, but what we can do, we can add NCT to the equation, really, where we can include no cable technology, which is new from back office, could be released very soon. Uh, and Bradley can explain a little bit more detail about how that works. Yeah, thank you, Dan. So NCT is essentially induction, wireless induction power to the mover. So we have up to three amps mm -hmm. and comms. Uh, it's important the comms bit because what that allows you to do is to do some processing on the mover itself. Absolutely. Yeah. So the three amps power will power things like actuators, suckers, maybe um, uh, servo motors, little servo yeah, motors. Absolutely. Yeah. The comms gives you the ability to actually control something and send data back to the controller. And importantly, and that's synchronous. It's right? absolutely yeah. synchronous. Yeah. So everything is synchronous that happens in the back off. EtherCAT world, um, which allows you to accurately process and track progress of product. Absolutely. So as you can see, we've done a quick tour now of the different options. So we're going to hand over to the next segment. Thank you very much. Okay, so here I am with Anik again. And we're in front of the GFX A, or Agile as it's known, which again opens up more possibilities when you're doing different types of processes. So Agile, as you can imagine, means it's more Agile. So this is a HEPCO development. This is something that was pushed through with HEPCO. So Alec, tell us a little bit about Agile. Yeah, and, and quite aptly, this technology really is the Formula One of XTS and GFX. When you think about um, speed and acceleration, what we've done is we've basically taken the mass out of the mover. Um, so it's down to 250 grams. Uh, which means that we can effectively accelerate that mover at over double the rate of the standard XTS. 
So this is really about maximizing performance throughput. Um, you know, when you think about a standard XTS GFX combination, you're probably looking at what, a peak of about 600 parts about per minute. 600, yeah. And with this, you're probably looking at 800 to 1,000 parts per minute. So it really is at the sort of pinnacle of throughput. Absolutely. So you can see, once again, we've got the full spectrum of options when it comes to the motion that you want to do. So this is obviously high throughput, lower mass products, which actually is quite common. And obviously time is money, so this is a big money saver for our customers. But also we have the full spectrum of movers available. So you've already seen five poles, seven pole, and of course we'll be talking later about larger poles. But Alex, talk us through a bit more of the options that's generally available across the board. Yeah, so you will all be familiar with the standard XTS GFX combination by now, the oval rectangular systems we can do. But you know, what we've done over the years is really sort of continued that development and improvement to expand XTS into new areas. So Dan and, and Brad have just shown you the uh, track management system, which allows switching of movers. Um, we've also developed a high drive system, which allows us to use larger magnets, as Dan just described, to create higher driving forces and larger movers with larger bearings to take higher payloads. Uh, beyond that, we're also looking at hygienic systems, which really moves uh, XTS into environments that we couldn't previously consider. So you think about clean down type clean applications down, yeah. for medical, medical um, wash down for your food type applications, or even aseptic. Um, where you're looking at some very sort of stringent uh, requirements. So very specialist materials um, and movers. And then... Well, absolutely. Yeah. So interesting you say that. So on the hygienic solutions that we're talking about here, we have actually, even then, in this field, we have three different levels. So there's the clean down, as we've already mentioned, which is medical. And then in the middle, we have wash down, which is typically food, you know, sort of dairy, food applications, uh, for example, you know, it could be pouch filling and things like that. And then right at the top end, when we're talking aseptic, this is really challenging. So this is taking us up a next level as well. This is really where we're talking about hydrogen peroxide, which is some of the nastiest yeah, stuff. Real nasty. So we really wanted to tailor it for our customers. You know, there's a huge mm. range of requirements and we know there's never going to be a one size fits all. Fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I think now that brings us on to our grand reveal, first ever world exclusive, uh, very excited to present GFXR. So here we have it, the world's first reveal of GFXR. Um, R standing for rectangular system, and the reason we call it rectangular is essentially because we've taken the standard GFX design and removed the corner segments. Absolutely, and the reason why we've removed those corners and used TMS in their, or track management switch in their replacement is because we're limited. It, when we have a clothoid bend, we're limited to seven poles, which again limits the force, and then when we have larger segments, our 22 and a half degree in the PRT2 segment, uh, we're limited to 10 poles. So really, we've taken this to another level with the benefits or another benefit of track management switch. Yeah, so by remo removing those constraints, you know, and of course, this is all customer driven, isn't it, Dan? Absolutely. You know, we, we're, we're looking at moving GFX and XTS into new areas, new capabilities. So the new, longer, larger mover gives us a much higher payload. We're talking about um, payloads of up to sort of 30 to 40 kilograms that can be placed on this, this um, mover. The mover body is much bigger, so it's stiffer, capable of taking far higher loads, and also process forces, crucially. Yeah. And when you think about the complications mechanically, um, on the existing mover, any sort of process forces would have to be removed from the mover body. And technically, that's quite challenging. With this design of mover, we can take comfortably up to 1,500 newtons of press force directly on the mover, because it's a much more stable design, it's centralized over both the, the rail system and the magnets, mm -hmm. uh, and that gives us a lot, a lot more capability. Absolutely, so again, we, for this particular mover with the 20 poles, that gives us about 400 Newtons peak force, okay? So it's a, a simple multiplication, but we actually, we could go higher. And also, if we go longer, you're thinking, 
you know, I'll need a bigger track management switch. That's not a problem. We can change that. We've, we've already done larger or wider track management switches. So we could even make a move of twice this size, giving us 800 peak newtons of force. Really, there's no limit. And also, we can have different numbers of tracks. So although we're talking about a rectangular system, that's generally what our customers have in the assembly process industry. Um, but there's nothing to stop us having different tracks for different processes or quality inspection, et cetera, et cetera, and then bringing them back to a main circuit. Yeah, so this is a highly configurable design. Um, we can go, uh, we've got the horizontal switch, but we can also go vertically. We can extend, we can do lengths of sort of 150 meters, yep. 300 plus movers. Um, so it's really sort of, again, extending the capability and capacity of GFX and XTS. Absolutely, it's all based on solid designs really. So we're just extending that know-how into new areas. Really looking forward to seeing new applications and what we can do with this technology. Okay, fantastic. Hopefully you've seen a lot of exciting technology and innovations that's given you a few ideas and will then in turn carry them on to develop even more yourself. So now it's time for the questions. Yeah, thanks Dan. And thank you to you for joining us today at MK7, the home of Red Bull Racing. And it's over to you. This is the interactive bit. We've assembled our panel of experts. So please get your questions in. We'll be right back. Okay, thank you and welcome back. And we've uh, assembled our team and we're ready to take your questions. So please, if there's anything you've seen today, get those questions in and we'll do our very best to answer them. Um, so Dan, let's uh, let's crack straight on with the, the questions. Um, uh, first one um, I'm going to field, and that is how different or more complicated is it to use a non Beckhoff control system with your DTS system? Okay, so the, the DTS system is designed to run with um, pretty much any sort of motor or drive system, whether it be an AC geared motor, servo, mist, servo guide or motor system. Uh, but equally, um, it runs very well with the Beckhoff system. And because, of course, because these guys are our technology partners, you get that level of, of um, certainty that it's going to be fully compatible. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, um, next up, uh, is there a cost uh, for the design during the concept stage with HEPCO? I presume this relates to the, um, the heavy duty gantry system. So um, Stuart, I will uh, pass this question over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, essentially, no, there is, there is no cost in terms of the design phase. Um, we work with our customers on a consultative basis, uh, looking at their application requirements, um, the, the details relating to everything they need, sort of payload speeds for the, for the applications. Um, and we can offer a, a, a quotation and a CAD model, and that is all free of charge. So there you go, okay. e easy as that. Yeah, thank you, Stuart. Okay, um, next up, Mark, thank you. Uh, is the GFXR available for quoting and purchase now? Um, well, the simple answer is yes. Um, if, yeah, absolutely. If... So <clears throat> as we said in during the presentation stage, uh, it's building really on existing technology. So, you know, we don't have to go through a beta process or anything like that. It's using existing know-how existing knowledge. So absolutely, yes, it's available. We're looking forward to talking about the applications with you, basically. Yeah, and uh, you know the, the details, just to, to bring you up to speed, the details are now fully available on the hepcomotion.com website. So if you want to find out more, go and check it out where we have data sheets available and so on. Absolutely, and on the back off side, we can help you with the calculations and payloads, everything else. So we'll work with you on the dynamics of the motion profile, basically. Great, thank you. Okay, um, so next question. Um, what temperature ranges can your track systems operate in? Um, Stuart, I'll pass this over to you initially, but then I guess we're gonna need some input from the Beckhoff guys for the XTS. 
Okay. Um, essentially, the, the guidance system can operate at temperatures from minus 30 to 120 degrees. Um, that, that's the, the limitations of the guidance systems. Um, with our DTS driven systems, we are sort of limited to minus 10 to plus 80 due to the drive belt technology. Okay. So on the back off side, Bradley, did you want to answer the temperature question? Yeah. So um, our modules will run from, I'm just double checking the upper limits. So from um, zero degrees up to um, 50 degrees without cooling, it does depend on the ambient temperature. And it also does depend on duty cycles. If you consider this a servo system, um, duty cycles is very much part of our calculations um, on um, temperature and longevity. Absolutely. So <clears throat> the other thing to mention with the XTS motor modules is we have a warning temperature. So we have four temperature sensors in each motor module per every 250 millimeter. When we hit 65, we get a warning. I think when we get into the mid 70s, I think it's something like that, then we have the alarm and we have to start taking action. So <clears throat> all the time we can monitor the temperature. So that's never really too much of an issue. And it's worth just... mentioning, sorry to jump in there. It's yeah, worth yeah, mentioning Karen. that we can, we can water cool as well. So we have done applications where um, HEPCO have manufactured a water cooling base plate, which brings our um, temperature right down to Absolutely, that's well a good point, Bradley. Yeah, good point, Bradley. So just to reiterate, so the, the cooling uh, modules that we can add, they can be done retrospectively. So if some machines are going into particularly high temperature environments in uh, warmer countries, basically, uh, we can retrospectively fit the cooling blocks um, without interfering with the design in general. So absolutely, you know, anytime we can add cooling to an XTS GFX system. Yep, great. Yeah, thanks, Brad. You you beat me to the punch there. So nice one. Uh, right, Joseph, uh, how do the drive systems stand up to high IP rated dusty environments? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, they they have a high IP rated. So we, uh, for both dust and, and water ingress, basically. So we have had some customers in, in quite harsh environments with the standard XTS module. But obviously now we have the IP69K version which then takes it to the next level with a hygienic uh, design with stainless steel, et cetera, et cetera. So the standard module is very resistive to, to dust, especially dust and even water. Of course, it's all, all the components are sealed, but for long-term sustained immersion or subjected to longer, more uh, harsh environments, we definitely need to move over to the hygienic variant. Yeah, and uh, and just to add, you know, when it comes to the XTS GFX combination, the the V Guide track system, as we've looked at earlier today, and and David amply um, or ably described to us the one of the fundamental benefits of the the V Guide system is its self cleaning property. So it is capable of working in some very very harsh and difficult environments. Okay, thank you for that, Joseph. Joseph, uh, right? Okay. Um, Next question, Brian, thank you for your question. What sort of external operational forces can the GFXR carriage handle compared to a standard GFX system? For example, a press force um, down on a tooling assembly. Well, this is a, a, a very pertinent point and it's, it's mm -hmm. one we come across quite often because you know customers naturally want to be able to carry out a process on the, on the, on the top face of the, of the mover. And, um, you know, certainly with the standard GFX mover, it's, it's not necessarily the bearings that are limited, the limiting factor, but the, the actual body of the mover itself. So, um, you know, with a, with a standard mover, you're really quite limited. And, and we would say, you know, the forces need to be, you know, in the, in the tens of Newtons uh, as a limit as a, of a press force. But with GFXR, as we presented earlier, um, certainly process mm. forces, um, up to 1500 newtons are quite feasible and really depending on where that press force is applied and how it's applied in terms of acceleration we could yeah. potentially edge that up a little bit further absolutely it's a, it's a very good question it's a very common question that we've had over the last five six years even 
So lots of people have basically a mechanical anvil, which, which slots in at the process before the press force is exerted. So this is totally doable, but uh, it needs a sort of custom solution really, depending on the application. So this is really fed into the design of GFXR. How's your arm after uh, picking that up, Dan? <laughs> it's not too bad. Right. Okay, th thanks for that, Brian. Okay, uh, Dustin is asking, what is the maximum speed of the fastest HEPCO motion system? Don't forget we are at Red Bull Racing. Very good point. Um, okay, maximum speeds. Um, Stuart, I'm, I'm going to throw this over to you, um, and I'm guessing we're going to be talking about probably GFX Agile um yeah certainly um sort of quite happily we can achieve speeds of, of four meters a second with with standard gfx and, and 40 meters a second squared acceleration um you move that across to an agile system uh, and we're sort of heading up towards eight meters a second and 100 meters a second squared acceleration so you are you are moving into areas of extremely high velocity and and high throughput for your uh, for your systems yeah, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Just to just to clarify there, from the Beckhoff point of view, you know, our sort of limit currently is about four meters a second for the control system. But as Stuart said, mechanically and theoretically, we can go higher. Absolutely. Great. Um, yeah, so we're we're pretty much up on Formula One speeds there, aren't we? You know, not far off it. I Absolutely. Expect, the, Ag so. the Agile is an incredible development, I think. You know, when we're moving from production figures from typically a ceiling of 600 a minute, up to a thousand, you know, eight hundred, a thousand. That's really increasing that productivity for very little uh, investment. Really, we can change the movers over and retune the system, and basically, it's it's good to go. Yeah, and although the the, the payload um, capacity is quite low, at only two hundred and fifty grams, um, but it's it's really aimed at sort of low value, high volume type products. So you think about um, you know, maybe pieces of candy. Um, or uh, blister packs for pharmaceuticals packs, or yep. um, <clears throat> syringe bodies, anything like that is, is sort of disposable, I, I, I assume. Absolutely, and we can still synchronize at those speeds. So people often think, you know, I can't synchronize with other axes or other devices, but absolutely we can. So all these tools are under one roof with Beckhoff. So there's absolutely no issue with synchronizing two or more XDSs to do a particular process on the fly. Okay, uh, this is an, an interesting question. Um, is the GFXR available with corrosion resistant components? Um, Stuart, uh, have we got that far on the design yet? Um, essentially, yes. Um, you know, uh, GFXR is, is an extension of our, our GFX sort of standard product. Um, so we have options where we can provide stainless steel slides and bearings and the, the, the track transfer system with also with stainless steel uh, fixings and corrosion resistant guides as well. So, um, yeah, it's absolutely possible. Um, we would just need to look at any application because um, stainless steel guides can can mean we need to sort of slightly reduce payloads. But, yeah, more than happy to look at uh, any application customers have. Brilliant. Okay. Um, well, it looks like the GFXR is is generating a lot of interest because we've got another question from Christian, who's asking what is the maximum speed and acceleration for GFXR, uh, and what is the maximum speed by maximum load? Um, Stuart, I'm going to throw this back to you again initially, good but uh, yeah, really good questions. Thanks for that. Um, so yeah, so the GFXR mechanically is is limited to four meters a second and forty meters a second squared. That that's the basics. Um, but what you need to then consider is the available linear force generated by the XTS drives um, and, and the combination of mass and available force will dictate how quickly you can accelerate. Yeah, and just to add, um, the data sheet is, as I mentioned earlier, has just gone live on our website, hepcomotion.com. Um, and I believe that will detail some of that um, speed and acceleration uh, performance. And if I remember correctly, we're certainly looking at um, a weight capacity of 30 kilograms um, being able to accelerate about nine meters per second squared. Absolutely. And one thing I wanted to say here is <clears throat> as a customer with an idea, potential opportunity um, or potential innovation, you don't have to contact Beckhoff and Hepco separately. 
we've been working together for many, many years now. So you can contact who you think is the most relevant for the initial questions. Stay with that contact and we'll work together in the background. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right. OK. Uh, next question. Oh, this is a nice, challenging one. Um, Stuart, are there, is there any possibility to run the GFX system without using grease or oil on the track? Uh, it's in in simple answer to that, no, there there isn't. Um, the 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 V guide systems can be run without lubrication, um, but it is very limiting to to the overall life of the system. Um, generally, GFX XTS systems are are operating at very high duty and very high life requirements. Um, so greasing of the system is is imperative. Um, but what we can look at for customers is different types of grease, be it food grade grease, um, sort of, or other types of grease that suit their application. Um, and we've also supplied these systems into environments that have previously been deemed unsuitable for um, lubrication. Uh, but the V Guide system works perfectly well with it. Yeah, thank you, Good. Stuart. So yeah, I think I think it's. It's important in those situations. It's not not the first time we've been asked that question, um, and, and you know we do find that customers have concerns over lubrication. The GFX uses a very very small amount. It's literally a thin film just to prevent the metal to metal contact. Um, and in most situations where there have been concerns, we've been able to allay those fears. So please do talk to us about your your individual application, uh, and I'm sure we can find a solution. Okay, uh, right, uh, moving on to the next question. Um, Dan, okay, what are the main trends in manufacturing? <laughs> good, that's a very good question, general question. Yep. So absolutely, the main trends in manufacturing is modularity, right? That's the single most uh, talked about, it's the single most implemented uh, innovation, if you like, uh, by a long way. So basically by having a common transportation system with modules, we can change and adapt the manufacturing function of that line or cell. Um, and it can be easily upgraded, easily integrated and validated even. So even the testing and commissioning of these types of things is very flexible. So you can commission and validate individual modules, not a whole machine each time. So yeah, that's probably the fundamental uh, trend i would say i'm seeing yeah and i, and I think you know in, in general the, what we're both seeing is that um you know manufacturers are more and more just turning to automation in general to to solve their problems and, and crucially save money absolutely so manufacturers actually are bringing some of that ip some of that engineering knowledge back in house that's a common trend uh, they're expanding their research and development teams their engineering teams and what we're seeing generally, certainly over the last four or five years, is track systems are generally getting longer. And this ties in really with the modularity. Yeah, thank you, Dan. OK, uh, keep those questions coming. These are all yeah. really good. And um, we'll continue to do what we, uh, what we can to answer those. Uh, next up, uh, I have an application where I'd like to pick multiple products on one gantry. Can you offer a system with additional heads? Stuart. Okay, thank you again. Um, yeah, ab absolutely. The, the the standard solution for for the HGS Hepco gantries is a a single sort of uh, cross axis and vertical axis. Um, but we can we can definitely look at bespoke solutions where we add two or three further heads, um, and these are then combined with individual cable chains to ensure that you can get your cable in and your back off servo motors or whoever it is you sort of select um, and feed the power to them. Um, essentially, if you come to us with that inquiry, um, we can assist you in the design and and provide a CAD model so that you can put that straight into your uh, into your layout. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, next question, I think, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll throw this probably over to Brad, do you think, Dan? Uh, do you support machine learning on the vision systems as well as traditional tools? All right, that's okay. I can answer that. Okay, so, right. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we have, of course, those uh, traditional tools uh, that we have on, on the vision uh, applications. So we're bringing those in through Gigi and soon to be our own cameras as well. But more and more people are turning to machine learning or deep learning as it's it's known really because the vision processing is is more akin to deep learning than machine learning. But absolutely, so we've got new products that are literally 
about to be launched, which can leverage the power of that deep learning, which means basically there's some of those more tricky inspection requirements uh, no longer have to be uh, done manually by hand or or fine tuned by hand. The deep learning will take care of those of those detailed problems. Thanks, Dan. Uh, OK, uh, next up. Can you elaborate on how the XTS curves limit performance? Mm. Uh, I presume this re relates to GFXR. Um, so yeah, just to give you a bit more more sort of information on that. Um, really, when you when you look think about the um, you know the, the the curved shape, um, the arc that you've got, and you, be, you basically your magnet has to be straight sure. because it's 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 fundamentally running along a straight for most of its time. Okay, so that's where we want to generate, and that's typically where most most of the work takes place as Absolutely, well yeah. so we want to be running along that straight with maximum power maximum performance so then as it goes around the corner um, because you've got an arc uh, and a and a, a straight magnet tangent um you you lose some of the contact between the magnet and the drive elements within, absolutely. Within you lose most force. Modules. absolutely so you lose force in the curve so we tried to limit the amount that that curve affects the performance of, of any given mover. So, you know, as Alex just said, typically on a clothoid bend, which is our tight 180 degree bend, we would have five or seven pole, four pole, we can go four pole as well. Uh, but on the larger curves, as we mentioned before, we're really looking at seven for the clothoid, and then we can go up higher to 10 or even 20 with GFXR or even higher. Yeah, and I, th I think it's, you know, it's important to mention that obviously the, the curves have the advantage of of giving us very sort of high performance in terms of throughput okay with the with the switcher mechanism there is you know there are obviously limitations in terms of how quickly we can we can transition those movers uh, but of course we can stack multiple movers on that switch and and i guess a, a good analogy seeing as we're here in um you know the red bull mk7 facility is if you think about a formula one car uh, it has to be light and agile to go around those corners, doesn't it? Very Absolutely. completing laps as quickly as possible. But <laughs> Otherwise if, it flies off. It, exactly. But if we took the, the took the corners off of the Formula One tracks, it becomes a drag strip. So you could have a big, heavy, powerful drag yeah. racer. Um, there you go. There's, there's your analogy. There we go. go. You can have well, that one on me. There's one other thing to say. So we, we, we are aware that, uh, you know, in the assembly, uh, stages that throughput might not be as high as some other processes that we do. However, we can make the switch longer, as we've already mentioned, but also we have different options. So we have a ball screw option, which is very reliable, you know, commonly known technology, but there's nothing to stop us using linear motors as well, where we can actually change the power of that linear motor, really customize it to the application. So, you know, do get in touch, do ask us, you know, any ideas that you have, we're open to talk about innovative ideas and out there sometimes, you know, out there a bit blue sky, but we, we enjoy it and we look forward to hearing more about it. Yep, perfect. Okay. Um, and yeah, there, there is another sort of question, which is, it sort of ties in a little bit of that with that. Um, what is the limit of the length on the track switch? If I want to increase the distance to install, mm -hmm. say a large industrial yeah, robot exactly in, right. in yeah. the center. Um, you know, so that ties in. That ties in. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, obviously, the ball screw is a go-to known in in mechanical engineering. That's absolutely, and it does its job very well. However, if we want longer strokes for the track management, longer transitions, say you know four meters by four meters or even bigger, you know, we do have that option for linear motors with an encoder. You know, absolutely, it's still going to be integrated into your system. But, you know, we can tailor it. So I think really, you know, the collaborations about, you know, Beckhoff's always been very open and always been um, very configurable, always flexible. You know, Hepco is exactly the same. We're very used to tailoring our designs uh, for your needs. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great point. I think, you know, yeah. all of the different sort of developments, particularly on GFX and XTS that we've looked at today, um, you know, that we've developed in our, our nine year partnership, it's all been customer driven. You know, we are yeah. very much responding to your needs. And, you know, if you need to do something with GFXR, we will certainly take a look at Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I think on that, we will uh, we'll call it a date. Thank Absolutely. you so much for joining us here at the Red Bull 
MK7, the home of Red Bull Racing, and we look forward to seeing you again next time. Very much, Luke. Thank you and goodbye.